Lost in Random is a great game with a unique battle mechanism. It's really fun once you get the hang of it, but it can be a bit confusing in the beginning, so I will break it down for you here. Hi, I'm Beacon. I'm a fantasy writer and a content creator who loves RPG games with good stories. I stream on Twitch four nights a week, and I release daily content on TikTok. Lost in Random is a deck building game. You need to collect money from the environment, as well as completing quests, so you can buy more cards from the vendor. With your slingshot, shoot and break every pot you see. You can also send dice in these holes to find some cash. Sometimes you can get cards as quest rewards as well, but for the majority you will need to buy them. You can find the vendor many decks all around every town. The dude loves to get around. When you buy cards from him, the yellow bar on the right fills up. When it does, you will get to choose a new pack to be added to the store. There are five card types. Weapons, Damage, Defense, Hazard and Cheat. You can only fit 15 cards in your deck, which can feel very limited, especially as your collection of cards grows. How you use these cards in battle is where it gets interesting. As default, you only have your slingshot and you can't damage the enemies with that. You need to shoot at the crystals that spawn on the enemies, which then drop crystal shards on the ground. These need to be collected by Dicey. You can run through them with him on your back or you can send him out to fetch. When he's collected enough shards, you will have a full hand of cards. It's time to roll the dice. You can roll earlier as well, but then you'll have le less options. You need to collect enough shards for at least one, one new card to spawn in your hand, and then you can roll. When you roll the dice, you enter Dice Mansion, where you can plan your attack. While time stands still for your enemies, you can move around as much as you want yourself, so use this to your advantage. Dicey can only roll low numbers in the beginning. As the game progresses and you slowly repair him, he can roll higher. You can see the number he rolls in the upper right corner of the screen. This tells you how many points you have to spend to use the cards in your hand. And you can see the costs of the cards on them. You can play as many cards as you can afford. You don't have to play all of them though, or any for that matter. You can leave the dice mention when you are done and ready to continue the fight. I kept doing this accidentally, so mind which buttons you are pressing. As you progress through Manny's store, he will reward you with golden pins that you can use to save a card in your hand for the next roll. So if you can't afford to use it now, or you want to save it for later for any other reason, you can do it with the pin. So this can be really handy. So with the cards, you can actually damage your enemies. You can use weapon cards to equip different melee or ranged weapons, or you can blow them up with a bomb or slap them with a giant hand. You can also use a bubble to protect yourself heal yourself, slow down enemies, trap them in a vortex. The possibilities are endless. Build the kind of deck that best suits your playstyle. I recommend trying out all the new cards you get and seeing which ones you like. There are many different types of monsters, or rather robots, to fight. Flying enemies are a lot easier to kill with a bow than melee weapon. Also, if you see a mob glow red like this, hitting it with a melee weapon will hurt you, so you will need to stay clear and hurt them from afar. My least favorite mob is this shooter guy. <laughs> At first he shoots once, but later in the game he'll shoot three times in a row. These are pretty easy to dodge with the slide, but if you're fighting many mobs at the same time, it gets harder to constantly keep an eye out on when he's gonna shoot. Sometimes 
he'll be unreachable on a platform as well, so you will need a bow to kill him. I noticed that if you stand behind other enemies while they're about to shoot at you, they will shoot at them instead, so you can take advantage of this. Your weapons will break after a certain amount of use. You can see their durability meter above Even's head. Bows have 10 arrows, but if you use another identical bow card, 10 more arrows will be added to what you already have, to a maximum of 20. You can also upgrade existing melee weapons by using another identical card. This will fix the weapon and boost it. Oh, and remember to dodge. This will help you prevent a lot of damage and you can move around quicker. Also, with certain cards, you can damage the mobs by dashing through them, or it will prevent your weapon from degrading for a while. That's an excellent way to keep using the same weapon for a long time. You sometimes run into board game arenas which are special fights fought while trying to complete the game objective. These are always different, and the rules are well explained in-game, so I don't need to go into these further. So, happy fighting everyone! If you want to know more about the fighting mechanism, different cards or enemies, ask away in the comments.